Chapter Four of Versailles Christmas Tide by Mary Stuart Boyd. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Four, Our Arbre de Noël. We bought it on the Sunday morning from Old Grandmère Gomard in the Avenue de Saint Cloud. It was not a noble specimen of a Christmas tree. Looked at with cold, unimaginative eyes, it might have been considered lopsided undersized it undoubtedly was yet a pathetic familiarity in the desolate aspect of the little tree aroused our sympathy as no rare horticultural trophy ever could some christmas fairy must have whispered to grandmere to grub up the tiny tree and to include it in the stock she was taking into versailles on the market morning for there it was its roots stuck securely into a big pot looking like some forlorn forest bantling among the garden plants grandmere gomar had established herself in a cosy nook at the foot of one of the great leafless trees of the avenue straw hurdles were cunningly arranged to form three sides of a square in whose midst she was seated on a rush-bottomed chair like a queen on a humble throne her head was bound by a gaily striped kerchief and her feet rested snugly on a charcoal stove her merchandise which consisted of half a dozen pots of pink and white primulas a few spotted or crimson cyclamen sundry lettuce and cauliflower plants and some roots of pansies and daisies was grouped around her the primulas and cyclamen though their pots were shrouded in pinafores of white paper skilfully calculated to conceal any undue lankiness of stem left us unmoved but the sight of the starveling little fir tree reminded us that in the school hospital lay two sick boys whose roseate dreams of london and holidays had suddenly changed to the knowledge that weeks of isolation and imprisonment behind the window blind with the red cross lay before them if we could not give them the longed-for home christmas we could at least give them a christmas tree the sight of foreign customers for grandmere gomard speedily collected a small group of interested spectators a knot of children relinquished their tantalizing occupation of hanging round the pan of charcoal over whose glow chestnuts were cracking appetizingly and the stall of the lady who with amazing celerity fried pancakes on a hot plate and sold them dotted with butter and sprinkled with sugar to the lucky possessors of a sou even the sharp urchin who presided over the old red umbrella which reversed with the ferrule fixed in a crossbar of wood served as a receptacle for sheets of festive note-paper embellished with lace edges and further adorned with coloured scraps temporarily entrusting a juvenile sister with his responsibilities added his presence to our court christmas trees seemed not to be greatly in demand in versailles and many were the whispered communings as to what les anglais proposed doing with the tree after they had bought it when the transaction was completed and grandmere gomard had exchanged the tree with a sheet of la patrie wrapped round its pot for a franc and our thanks the interest increased we would require some one to carry our purchase and each of the bright-eyed short crops jean et pierre was eager to offer himself but our selection was already made a slender boy in a beret and black pinafore who had been our earliest spectator was singled out and entrusted with the conveyance of the arbre de noël to our hotel the fact that it had met with approbation appeared to encourage the little tree the change may have been imaginary but from the moment it passed into our possession the branches seemed less despondent the needles more erect will you put toys on it the youthful porter asked suddenly yes it is for a sick boy a boy who has fever have you ever had an arbre de noël jamais was his conclusive reply the tone thereof suggesting that that was a felicity quite beyond the range of possibility the tree secured there began the comparatively difficult work of finding the customary ornaments of glass and glitter to deck it a fruitless search had left us almost in despair 
when late on monday afternoon we joyed to discover miniature candles of red yellow and blue on the open-air stall in front of a toy store a rummage in the interior of the shop procured candle clips and a variety of glittering bagatelles laden with treasure we hurried back to the hotel and began the work of decoration in preparation for the morning during its short stay in our room at the hotel the erstwhile despised little tree met with an adulation that must have warmed the heart within its rough stem when nothing more than three coloured glass globes a gilded walnut and a gorgeous hummingbird with wings and tail of spun glass had been suspended by narrow ribbon from its branches rosine the pretty swiss chambermaid chancing to enter the room with letters was struck with admiration and pronounced it très belle and karl bringing in a fresh panier of logs when the adorning was complete and silly little delightful baubles sparkled and twinkled from every spray putting down his burden threw up his hands in amazement and declared the arbre de noël magnifique this alien christmas tree had an element all its own when we were searching for knick-knacks the shops were full of tiny holy babes lying cradled in waxen innocence in mangers of yellow corn one of these little effigies we had bought because they pleased us and when the decoration of the tree being nearly finished the tip of the centre stem standing scraggily naked called for covering what more fitting than that the dear little sacred bebe in his nest of golden straw should have the place of honour it was late on christmas eve before our task was ended but next morning when karl carrying in our petit dejeuner turned on the electric light and our anxious gaze sought our work we found it good then followed a hurried packing of the loose presents and a fiacre having been summoned the tree which had entered the room in all humility passed out transmogrified beyond knowledge rosine duster in hand leant over the banisters of the upper landing to watch its descent karl saw it coming and flew to open the outer door for its better egress even the stout old driver of the red-wheeled cab creaked cumbrously round on his box to look upon its beauties the market was busy in the square as we rattled through from behind their battlemented wares the country mice waged wordy war with the town mice over the price of merchandise but on this occasion we were too engrossed to notice a scene whose picturesque humour usually fascinated us for as the carriage jogged over the rough roads the poor little abra de noel palpitated convulsively the gewgaws clattered like castanets as though in frantic expostulation and the radiant spun-glass hummingbirds quivered until we expected them to break from their elastic fetters and fly away the green and scarlet one with the gold-flecked wings fell on the floor and rolled under the seat just as the cab drew up at the great door of the school the two red cross prisoners who now that the dominating heat of fever had faded were thinking wistfully of the forbidden joys of home had no suspicion of our intention and we wished to surprise them so burdened with our treasure we slipped in quietly from her lodge window the concierge nodded approval and at the door of the hospital the good sir received us a flush of pleasure glorifying her tranquil face then followed a moment wherein the patients were ordered to shut their eyes to reopen them upon the vision splendide of the arbre de noël perhaps it was the contrast to the meagre background of the tiny school hospital room with its two white beds and bare walls but placed in full view on the centre table the tree was almost imposing standing apart from grandmere's primulas and cyclamen as though conscious of its own inferiority it did not wish to obtrude it had looked dejected miserable during its sojourn at the hotel the appreciation of its meanness had troubled us but now in the shabby little chamber where there were no rival attractions to detract from its glory we felt proud of it it was just the right size for the surroundings a two-franc tree had grandmere possessed one would have been brobdignagian and pretentious a donor who is handicapped by the knowledge 
that the gifts he selects must within a few weeks be destroyed by fire is rarely lavish in his outlay yet our presents wrapped in white paper and tied with blue ribbons when arranged round the flower-pot made a wonderful show there were mounted boars who when you pressed the ball at the end of the air-tube galloped in a wobbly uncertain fashion the invalids had good fun later trying races with them and the boy professed to find that his boar gained an accelerated speed when he whispered bobs to him there were tales of adventure and flasks of eau de cologne and smart virile pocket-books one red morocco the other blue we regretted the pocket-books but their possession made the recipients who boy-like took no heed for the cleansing fires of the morrow feel grown up at once and they yearned for the advent of the first day of the year that they might begin writing in their new diaries for the sister there was a miniature gold consecrated medal it was a small tribute of our esteem but one that pleased the devout recipient suspended among the purely ornamental trinkets of the tree hung tiny net bags of crystallized violets and many large chocolates rolled up in silver paper the boys who had subsisted for several days on nothing more exciting than boiled milk openly rejoiced when they caught sight of the sweets but to her patient's disgust the sueur who had a pretty wit of her own promptly frustrated their intentions by counting the dainties i count the chocolates they are good boys wise boys honest boys and i have every confidence in them but i count the chocolates said the sueur as we passed back along the rue de la parois worshippers were flocking in and out of notre dame running the gauntlet of the unsavoury beggars who loudly importunate thronged the portals before the quiet nook wherein under a gold bestarred canopy was the tableau of the infant jesus in the stable little children stood in wide-eyed adoration and older people gazed with mute devotion some might deem the little spectacle theatrical and there was a slight irrelevance in the pot plants that were grouped along the foreground but none could fail to be impressed by the silent reverence of the congregation no service was in process yet many believers knelt in prayer here a pretty girl returned thanks for evident blessings received there an old spinster the narrowness of whose means forbade her expending a couple of sous on the hire of a chair knelt on the chilly flags and murmured words of gratitude for benefits whereof her appearance bore no outward indication we had left the prisoners to the enjoyment of their newly acquired property in the morning at gloaming we again mounted the time-worn outside stair leading to the chamber whose casement bore the ominous red cross the warm glow of firelight filled the room scintillating in the glittering facets of the baubles on the tree and from their pillows two pale-faced boys boys who despite their lengthening limbs were yet happily children at heart watched eager-eyed while the sweet-faced sir with reverential care lit the candles that surrounded the holy baby chapter four